Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be guiding you season by season, month by month of what to expect from your leopard gecko. Now I have recorded weighing videos for the last three years but my notes on weights and observations of leopard gecko behaviour span all the way back to 2006. I do believe they follow a pattern every year, especially the females. So I'd like to show you guys this pattern so you know exactly what to expect. We'll start in November, so the end of autumn, sometimes known as fall. So November, I feel, is a month of transitioning. Transitioning from bulking for winter to starting to refuse food. Leopard geckos are like our own little barometers. They can tell when the air pressure is dropping and cold weather is approaching well before us. Now this year I'd say autumn has been very mild for me so I have been lucky that my geckos are still eating but I know from previous years and what I've been hearing from you guys that November can be a month of slowing down and loss of appetite. Now this slowing down and lack of interesting food continues into December and this is partial brumation, not full brumation or even hibernation but kind of similar. You see your geckos may sleep more, prefer darker hides, eat less but interestingly enough they will retain weight fairly well. It can be stressful when your gecko isn't eating and I'd recommend weighing them either weekly if they're babies or every two weeks or monthly if they're older. This way you'll be able to tell if they're successfully in a brumation like state and not losing significant weight because there may be something more sinister. For example, I don't want you overlooking illnesses which could cause them to go off of their food. In this time, despite their lack of appetite, I will still offer food. However, I do not just leave food in the tank, I will offer one insect at a time, see how they react to it, and if there's no interest, I will simply remove the food. Now we're at the end of winter, so January and February. These are our bulking months, so if your gecko was successful in November and December, they shouldn't have lost much weight. However, in these next two months, you should see a nice increase in weight. I see this as setting them up for spring, especially the females. So whatever their weight is at the end of February, this will most probably be the heaviest weight all year. Though of course this does vary from gecko to gecko, it's just what I've observed over the years. Now we move into spring. If you have a male leopard gecko, or a single female, or even just a young leopard gecko, this may not affect them at all. However, if you have more than one female, even if they're not housed together, they can trigger each other off to ovulate, which sparks some behavioural changes. So something in the past I have noticed in March is my leopard gecko, my male leopard gecko, would display courting behaviour in his tank, so he'll waggle his little tail just at nothing, and I think it's probably because he can pick up on the scent of the females in my room. As well as this behaviour you may notice, you may also notice a whole burst of energy from your gecko, so they might be scratching at the glass and wanting to come out and explore and exercise, and my only theory why they may do this, other than just the general temperature raising, is possibly because in the wild this would be prime time to get out and find a mate. You may also notice in March, April and May that your females may have gone off their food again and this is because they may be ovulating. Ovulating for leopard geckos simply means releasing two little eggs in their body. In most cases if the gecko hasn't been bred with the eggs will not form a shell and they won't need to be laid they'll simply be reabsorbed. However if you've been watching my channel for a while it's quite evident that females can and will sometimes lay eggs without a male. They are always infertile though. Another behaviour you may notice with your females, especially if they're ovulating, is digging. And if you have loose substrate, you'll see them doing this a lot around this time. And the fact they're so good at digging and rearranging their tank says to me this is probably a natural behaviour that would occur in the wild. And if you don't want to use loose substrate all over your tank, then maybe provide an egg laying hive that contains something like eco earth. Because if your female's egg has formed a shell and she needs to lay it, she can become egg bound if you cannot find an appropriate place to lay it. 
Now a lack of appetite in females can stretch all the way into the start of summer, so June. It can be very worrying to see your gecko not eating and losing significant weight. And like in winter, I will still offer food just in case the appetite briefly comes back. And though not the healthiest, I have been inclined to offer a cheeky waxworm here and there, dusted in supplements to ensure geckos are at least getting something and getting the supplements they need. You can also get them to lick calcium and or multivitamins off of your finger just to help them through this time. And then we hit July and August. By now the ovulation period may have passed, the geckos are starting to get their appetite back and gain weight steadily, but in some cases it can be quite significant as seen in the past with gizmo. Then we get back to autumn. Your gecko should be eating fine throughout September and October, gaining weight nicely to get them through winter. And then our story starts again. Now of course, as I said, most of these behaviour and appetite changes throughout the year mainly affect adult females, but winter will most probably affect all leopard geckos. This is a pattern of behaviour that has occurred year after year for my gecko, so I'm quite used to it, though that's not to say I don't get worried, especially when they lose a significant amount of weight. But I think it will be great for you to note down your gecko's weights and any behaviour changes so you can get to know their pattern. It may be very similar to my gecko's, but it's good to know for yourself. And this way you can separate their natural yearly cycle from something that could potentially be a side effect of an illness. And if you're ever concerned about your gecko's health, please take them to a vet. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully it's helped. Let me know in the comment section below how your geckos are doing this time of year. Maybe it's similar to mine. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I make videos about geckos and bugs every four days. So if that's something that interests you, click that subscribe button. But anyway, thank you so much for watching guys and goodbye.